Five years ago, Luke and I stepped on this land and we knew it was meant for us. We had no idea what obstacles would get in our way or how hard we would have to work to keep our dream going. But we knew we were ready, ready for this new life, ready to learn the off-grid way and ready to call Portugal our home. Hi, I'm speaking to you all as friends because a lot of you are. We have been going for three years now. But for those of you who are new to our channel, we are Sara and Luke. We are a couple of Maltesers from Malta living in Portugal. And this new adventure started around six years ago. We had a thriving food truck in Malta, but our quality of life was pretty low. And then Luke asked me a question that changed everything. If you die tomorrow, are you happy with today? And my answer was no. So we sold everything and started this new adventure. We really had no idea what we wanted to do or where we wanted to end up. So with a backpack and a bank account, we left our home country and flew to the USA. We just needed to walk and clear our heads. And so we did. We went on a very, very, very long walk. We started the PCT, which is the Pacific Crest Trail, and it takes you from the Mexican border all the way to Canada if you do the whole thing. We were walking for days on end, sometimes 12 to 14 hour days. We enjoyed the whole experience from the very little things to the huge ones meeting lovely people, seeing beautiful countryside and pushing our bodies to the limit. While walking, the only thing we had on our minds was, will we find water before our supply finishes? And where are we going to resupply for food? Mm -hmm. Looks mean sandwich. Oh yeah. Looks doing his magic. But what was also on our mind was, what did we want to do with the next chapter of our lives? Where did we want to go next? Did we want to finally settle down? So we walked, and we walked, and we walked. And as we walked, things became so much clearer. On our travels, we always looked for the same things. We always wanted to go on beautiful hikes. We wanted to be in nature. We wanted animals around us. So this is what we wanted for our future. But the destination, we didn't decide then. We decided that at 3 a.m. in the morning in Mexico. But that's another story for another day. And right now I'm writing a blog about it on our newly opened website. So if you want to check that out, I will leave it in the description below. Good morning. It's time to put the bed down. So 
so just weeks after that decision, we flew to Portugal and we never left. When we arrived, we didn't just pick a place and move here. We drove around Portugal in search for the ideal land, the ideal spot, and most importantly, the most affordable one. And that got us to Castelo Branco. It took us less than two months from when we dreamt the dream to find this amazing place, which we now call home. It was much bigger than we wanted, for sure. We were looking for something between one to two hectares of land. You know, something small, something manageable. But we decided on 17 hectares of wild, bushy, untamed, awesome land with huge boulders, wild walks, and bordering 400 meters of river. There was no doubt in our mind that this was our spot. And then there were the ruins. The main ruin used to be an old cheese factory, but had been abandoned for 40 years and left to become totally overgrown and wild. With no jobs and only our savings, we did have to be careful. And we were trying to look for land under 30,000 euros, but we bought this piece of land for 58,000. With not enough savings to renovate the ruins, but when you want something so badly, you just have to take the risk. When we got to the land, there was nothing. And when I say nothing, I mean a sketchy access road, to say the least, no water, no electricity, and everywhere was overgrown. So we cleared a spot to park our caravan, and then we got a dog. We had been wanting a puppy for a long time now, but Luke and I had just never settled anywhere, so it was never the right time. But after buying this piece of land in Portugal, I think we're finally setting our roots. So it was definitely time to get a dog. And we got Molly. She was thrown in the dustbin at just two days old and we took her at just two weeks old. So it was a huge learning experience for us. We had never had a dog together and never one this young either. So we have made a few mistakes on the way, but she has grown up to be a very clever girl. She has a few problems, but on the whole, she is amazing. absolutely nothing about this new life. We had traveled, yes, camped a lot of places and lived pretty simply. But this was different. This was now a way of life for us, not a holiday that will end and life will get back to normal. So we took everything one step at a time, learning a few new things a day, just so our heads don't explode. When it rained, another joy of our caravan was that it was leaking from everywhere. It was falling to bits. Wow. Molly, a first thunderstorm, Koopa. So good. Very deadly, you say. Once we had our garden going and we had running water and we felt settled, we got news that we were going to have visitors to our land and we had nowhere to put them, so we decided to get a bell tent. And once that bell tent was up and it looked beautiful, we decided to go down to Morta to collect our belongings with our puppy Molly. 
On the way to Malta, the four days it took us, we just slept in the boot of the car. On the way back from Malta, our car was chock a block. So we needed to stay in hotels. And that was a really good experience for Molly. She absolutely loved it. She'd run into the hotel room, jump on the bed, smiling from ear to ear, checking out all the cupboards. It was so nice seeing her enjoy all the new places she was experiencing. <laughs> She's loving it. <laughs> When we got back to our land that we missed so very much, we decided no more noisy generator and we upgraded to solar. That is the north to, north to south. So you need to face your, your solar panels to south, that direction. Around August, September, we had so much food growing in our gardens. It looked amazing. And harvesting all these amazing vegetables made us really, really proud of how much we had already achieved. Of course, you can't have a beautiful piece of land and not enjoy it thoroughly. So we spent some really good days walking, exploring, and just seeing what we have. And while we're doing that, clearing some parts to make it easier for us for the next time. We were just so happy with our land. I still can't believe it till today. I go out and I look around and think, wow, this is ours. But there was one thing we were not happy with, and that was our home. This caravan that was falling apart by the day. There were some extremely hard days to get through, and sometimes we thought, what have we done? How will we ever cope? Will we ever manage to get to where we're heading? But whenever we felt like that, we would just walk to the top of the hill, look around our land, see all the beauty that surrounds us, hear the birds singing, see that magnificent view next to the huge ruin. And we just know that this is where we are meant to be. Living in the country, in nature, surrounded by wildlife and animals, clean air, a slower pace of life, no light pollution. So amazing starry nights every night. There's just nothing else like it. We bought our dream place, but for how long? We sold our business, we sold our house, we moved country. We risked everything for this life. But what happens when you have no income and you're burning through your savings? We thought we would have enough for the first five years, but boy, were we wrong. So let me start from the beginning of year two. We were still living in our manky caravan, the, the caravan we were not very keen on. The winters are really cold in Portugal. We didn't expect the winters to be cold. I don't know why we didn't, but we weren't prepared for the freezing cold nights we would have here. And they didn't get easier with a leaky caravan roof. So many winter mornings, we woke up to a frost-covered garden. I'm not gonna lie, it looked beautiful, but it wasn't very good for our plants. So we decided to get a greenhouse to help us out with that little problem we had. We kept exploring and learning, and we were loving this life and the freedom that came with it. But we also had another growing problem in our caravan. You see, our caravan was not only leaky, but it was also full of holes. From these oh so many holes, we got a lot of unwelcome visitors. Cheeky mouse. 
We were trying to catch the mice and deal with the problem, but it didn't go away. In the meantime, we had so much work to do on the land. We would only worry about it when we got in, back into the caravan. Because we had a road to do and we wanted to dig a couple of ponds, we decided that maybe it's a good idea to look for a digger. That would really help us work fast on our land. And it didn't take Luke long to find a digger for sale and we went to see it. And that was the beginning of our second most expensive mistake. For Luke and I went by ourselves, no mechanic or anything. And it looked okay, it started straight away. Luke and I were daydreaming about all the work we're going to do on the land, the ponds we're going to dig, the road we're going to fix. And that came all crashing down after just a couple of hours. And this digger would end up being just a feature on our land for the next couple of years. The digger has an amazing story. So if you want to find out what happens in the future with our digger, make sure you subscribe because the community in Portugal and the people we have met made all this happen. It is a truly lovely story, which I'm going to touch on in year four. As I said in the beginning of this video, we were living on our savings and we didn't think much of it in the beginning, but after buying the digger, we were getting worried for our money was going down very fast. So from that day on, Luke and I made the pact that we were going to try and save money as much as possible wherever we can. And for the first year and a bit, every single time we needed to do laundry, we would go to the laundromat. And apart from wasting our whole day, it also wasted a lot of our money. And Luke knew a guy who was throwing away a bike. And we also had a friend who was getting rid of her broken washing machine. With our growing mouse problem, I also had something else growing which was of some concern, for I had a lump growing in my throat. And it was getting bigger and bigger every day. And because I wasn't too comfortable with not knowing Portuguese and going to the Portuguese hospital, I stayed flying down to Malta and meeting a surgeon in Malta. And I found out I had a tumour in my thyroid and it had to come out but I was on a waiting list, a very, very long waiting list. While I was in Malta, Luke wanted to surprise me because we do stuff like that for each other. And he went to the ruin, which we hadn't been in for a while, and he cleared all the tiles and the roofing and also dropped the brick walls. When I came back, we decided we had to do something about this mouse problem because they were just getting super cheeky. And we got Timmy. <laughs> Your dog is like sandpaper. <laughs> <laughs> and Timmy and Molly hit it off straight away and they grew closer and closer by the day who is an excellent mouser and he was a great playmate for Molly Timmy Molly. caught his first mouse but Molly wants it Molly. <laughs> but he wasn't enough and we had to do something about this problem ASAP the caravan was getting really, really hard to live in. <laughs> After a five second chat, we were thinking, what are we doing? We're living in a manky, gross caravan. We have a beautiful bell tent that's only been used once. So we moved into the bell tent. I don't know why we didn't do it before. There was so much room. Molly and Timmy loved it. They were running and playing on everything. 
Luke could finally stand up straight for the first time in a year and a bit. And there was no leaky roof. But what to do with this gross caravan? Luke was really going hard at tearing it down because we thought we we're just going to tear it down and try and recycle what we can and throw away the rest. And then a friend gave us an idea. She said, you want chickens? You need a chicken coop. You want to get rid of the caravan? Why don't you do both? Why don't you repurpose the caravan and make a chicken coop from it? What an awesome idea. While living in our beautiful tent, we also found a really good deal on another caravan and we bought it just for visitors because now we had nowhere to put visitors. And we got it just in time because we heard news that Luke's cousin was coming to visit us and he has a little bit of background in building. So it was a perfect timing. So when lovely Alex came, Luke and him were planning to build our next home on the chassis of our old caravan, which is now our chicken coop. When we moved into the tent, we did not have a kitchen down there. The only kitchen we had was in the caravan that we just tore down. So we used the kitchen that we had in the caravan and we made a temporary outdoor kitchen. And life was great. The mouse problem seemed to have disappeared or at least moved in with the chickens. And we had so much produce in our garden. And a lot of different insects were showing up that we hadn't seen in year one. The work on the gypsy caravan was moving along quite nicely. We had a garden full of sunflowers, a lovely visit from my niece. We were preserving our own produce, eating fresh vegetables every day, and our chickens were finally laying eggs. We were composting our food to better our gardens next year. Everything was going great, except for our money situation. That was looking very, very sad, unfortunately and we were getting pretty worried. We said from the beginning that we would leave and get jobs once our money runs out, but we were thinking we had five years to do it in. You see, we did have quite a bit of money when we sold our house and our business, but we did go on a huge holiday. We don't regret a single second of it because it was amazing. We started off with the PCT, but then we also bought a van in America and Luke transformed it into a beautiful home. And we went to some amazing places.
we were having the road trip of our life, meeting lovely people, staying in beautiful places, going on hikes, going to parks, seeing animals, encountering wildlife everywhere. But that was only the first part of our plan. We wanted to do Central and South America as well with our van, which we did start. We'd started in Mexico. And after just a couple of weeks in Mexico, we saw our money going down drastically. But it was crazy how expensive it was. We were sleeping in the van in America, but in Mexico we couldn't. It was too dangerous and way too hot. So we're paying for its diesel, but also paying to stay in hotels. We, had, we couldn't cook in the van, so we had to eat out as well. And it was getting very expensive and we we're burning through our savings really fast. And then Lou came up with this and he said, listen, the amount of money we're spending and the amount of happiness we're getting from this trip is not adding up. Let's do something about it. And one night, Luke was online looking at property in Portugal and he thought, this is where we need to be. And this brings us to where I am today and why our money finished so much faster than we thought it would finish. But we knew we didn't want to leave the land, so we did a lot of research and seeing if we can find any online jobs. But unfortunately, nothing worked out. And then I came up with this idea of starting a YouTube channel. In the beginning, it wasn't going to be for us. I wanted to do this for Molly. Go, action! <laughs> I love watching her and I figured other people would too. But I was wrong and her channel never took off and we were running out of money. So in desperation, I got over my fear of talking to the camera and Luke did too. And we started documenting our lives. And I'm really happy with where we are now. But let me not jump years just yet and go back to year two, where we're still starting our channel. We haven't been monetized yet. We were even busier towards the end of the second year. And worse still, Luke hurt his back. So work on the gypsy caravan had to stop. But he did fill his time with things that weren't so labor intensive. And then winter came again and nights were so cold in the tent. Our caravan wasn't amazing with all the drips and stuff, but the tent wasn't insulated, so it was really cold at night. But we all cuddled together, kept warm, and we slept happy in our big, beautiful tent. But that will change overnight. The most challenging times for us living off-grid are the winter months. We need to prepare for the cold weather, the frost, heavy rain, and unrelenting winds. The days are so short and the nights so long and cold. And we just have so much on our mind. We have to-do lists that go on forever. But we do take full advantage of these long nights to improve ourselves. And this is where I will mention the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. For those of you who don't know what Skillshare is, well, it is an online learning community for creatives. With so many courses to choose from, I am a really spoiled creative. My course list that gets longer and longer throughout the busy months, I can finally start tackling them in winter. Learning new skills to make my next year more successful. I am working on opening an Etsy shop right now. I have been working on this for a while, but everything takes long, especially with these busy months. I had planned to launch my shop once I have 50 bookmarks ready. Now, because the weather has been so crazy lately, it's been really hard to dry my homemade paper. So if you would like to see the finished product, made with homemade paper that I use from the scrap paper that I used to plan our videos, with flowers and leaves picked from our land and then dried here, and made with love. So if you'd like to see the finished product of my bookmark, make sure you subscribe so you see how they turn out. I will let you know in the community post when my shop has its launch day. And I would like to thank Skillshare, of course, for sponsoring this video. And, and also to Tiffany Emery, thank you so much for helping me set up a professional Etsy shop. We need all the advantages we can take when we first start a new business. And for anyone out there who loves making things and might want to make a little side hustle from it, then why not follow that dream and check out Skillshare. They can help you every step of the way, from getting organized to opening your own shop. So what are you waiting for? So if you're looking to start a new venture, gain a new skill, or just improve your day-to-day -day life and becoming a happier you, then check out Skillshare. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain, especially with this awesome offer, because the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And if you're not sure what to give a friend or a family member, 
then this might be the perfect present for them. So go on, click on my link. You know you want to. Now back to our story, and it is our third year of living off-grid. Things were going great, but winters are very cold in Portugal, and we were having some crazy winds and some very noisy nights in our bell tent. Some nights the winds were so strong, the bell tent was hitting us in the face while we slept. And one night, in the middle of a thunderstorm, the tent ripped. And it wasn't just a small tear either. It was a massive rip from the top of the tent right to the bottom. So lucky for us, we could watch the thunderstorm right from our beds. <laughs> the novelty of watching the lightning and the rain coming through didn't last for more than a few seconds. So we got up and we had to move everything to one side of the tent just to save all our furniture. And then wondered what the heck we are going to do now. By this time, we had moved our outdoor kitchen into the gypsy caravan. Eating indoors was such a luxury. It was getting a little bit trying cooking in the outdoor kitchen, but we could not sleep there because one side was still open and it would be freezing to sleep there at night with the wind passing through it exposed to all the elements. On the way to the gypsy caravan for breakfast, we noticed that the storm had destroyed our greenhouse too. So after breakfast, Luke went to town and he bought some heavy duty plastic to cover our greenhouse with. And then he rented a van for our next plan. Luke found a good deal on a yurt. The only problem was that the yurt was in Spain and Spain isn't that far away, but COVID had just started up. We did the whole Spain year thing in a day. We were very careful there and back, but mission accomplished and we came back with a beautiful year. And everything was finally under a roof, a sturdier roof and dry again. And work on the gypsy caravan continued. Oh my goodness, the heater was a game changer. We would sit inside next to a hot fire with a mug of lemongrass tea from our garden and just stay there till the very last minute till we were ready to go to bed. Because we're still sleeping in the earth and the earth was very cold so we'd just run into the earth and get into our sleeping bags.
When Luke vanished the front porch, this is how we got in and out of the gypsy caravan for a couple of days. Work on the gypsy caravan came to a halt when we got given a lot of wood from our neighbor. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. He had lots more for us. He got these massive stumps into our car and got them home down the rocky road. But the abuse on our car would only get worse. Keep watching to see what he manages to carry in our poor car. Seriously, I have no idea how he managed to get them in or out, but he did it. He started making useful things and then he taught himself how to freehand chainsaw mill and that changed everything. I mean, look at that. Who needs a sawmill? Fucking awesome. <laughs> and he started making bigger things. First, he made a bench. And then he made another bench. And then another bench. This off-grid life was definitely for us. We were loving it, exploring and learning new things every day. But there was something I really wanted. And that was a bigger farm animal than a chicken. From the young age of around seven, I had a huge dream that when I grow up, I would have my own piece of land and be walking around with a lot of different animals. I was happy with the animals I had. I love Molly and I love Timmy and the chickens were great. But I did want to add a bigger farm animal to our pack. Now Luke isn't as bad as me. I am nuts for animals, but he does love animals. And when Luke and I went through our traveling phase and we traveled around 
most of Asia, we went to New Zealand, Australia, we would always seek out the same things, nature and animals. Whether we were traveling in our car or on a bike, any animal on the road that looked like they even wanted that little bit of attention, we were there. And when we traveled around Australia and New Zealand, we were traveling in a car and a van and we would have veggies for us and extra for animals in case we encountered them on the road. But this one time we went to this nature park and there were a bunch of birds and we had, and when I say we, it was really Luke, had the most incredible experience with one of the birds over there. We've never shared this footage with anyone and I am really happy to be sharing it with you guys. <laughs> Woo! He liked you. What? Kiss, kiss. I was trying to climb on. Scratch what? What did I say? I think if you shot in my face though. That's French. Um, yes please. Thank you. <laughs> 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 they have next on though. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You just pull to the part late and sit there. Want to it? <laughs> no, you don't want it. Mm. He doesn't want anything, just Luke. <laughs> Wasn't that just amazing? Sid just fell in love with Luke. The second that that bird saw Luke, he did not leave his side. And the funny thing was, we went around the park, we went to see some kangaroos that day, and Sid remained on Luke's shoulder. It was amazing to watch. Uh oh. Mm -mm. He doesn't like him, this one. Uh oh, no. <laughs> 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 anyway, back to our life in Portugal and we decided, yes, it's time for another animal and we decided on goats, whether we were ready for them or not. So Luke put his plank making to good use and he made me a beautiful goat house.
Getting Ghosts was amazing. It was everything I thought it would be. They were super cute and they were fun to be with. And they were also really fun to watch because they're funny animals. As happy as I was with the goats, there was something that was annoying me like crazy. So the lump in my thyroid, I called him Neil, and he was getting very, very annoying. Every day that went by, I was having problems breathing. So it was slightly uncomfortable too. I was on a waiting list in Malta, but I hadn't heard anything from them, and I kind of gave up. And I went to the hospital in Castellabranco, and just a few weeks after we got goats, I got a confirmation that I'm going in for my surgery. Time has come to take out Neil. I have my tubes ready. So not long now I'm gonna have a shower. They told me to shower with this. Only this. And then I'm gonna put on these sexy tights. Molly spent the first day of me in hospital crying for me. What a baby! Are you crying for me? She was so sad. You don't love the dad did to be happy without mummy. <laughs> Molly, where's mommy? Oh, it's only been one hour. What are you going to be like in four days? <laughs> mommy, where's mommy? Oh, no. I had a great time in a hospital because I really don't mind hospitals and doctors. They are amazing. The surgery went without a hitch. The only thing was I had to take a pill a day for my missing half a thyroid. But that was a small price to pay. I healed really fast. And better still, my tumour was benign. And even better news, after a month, I went for a checkup and the doctor said, your half a thyroid is working so well, you can stop the pills. Amazing! And just after a couple of days, I was out walking with the goats again and doing all the usual things, just being a little bit careful. Now six months into our channel, and it was getting very, very hard to edit. You see, the program I was using, and still am till today, DaVinci Resolve, was way, way too good for our computer. So our computer was very slow. Where it could take a couple of hours to edit, it took days. And where it should have taken a couple of minutes to render, it took hours. So with the boost that we got from our channel, not a money boost, but we're getting so many nice messages. So we thought our channel is going to go places. Let's invest in a better computer. I can't speak about our third year without speaking about YouTube because it has changed our life. It has helped us stay here. And the fact that we get support from our patrons has helped us keep going when we thought it was not possible. I guess every single year there were a lot of firsts, but this year I felt there were so many more. We learned so much this year and did so many things for the first time. I learned how to take care of goats, trim their hooves, milk a goat, teach them tricks, learn how to deal with a buck, perfected the buck apron. Luke learned how to use a scythe, use a chainsaw, make a lot of beautiful things, build a vermicomposting toilet. There were also things that we had to redo or finish, like changing the roof on the gypsy caravan and finish painting the caravan. The extension was kind of a, an afterthought, which is why, as you can see, the pitch isn't amazing, which is why 
when uh, I had the tires there, when it would rain and it, the wind would be this way, it would kind of climb up the tires and fall in between the gypsy caravan and the extension over there. I had filled it with um, expanding foam to try and stop any water, but we ended up having leaks. I'm just so happy that I'm actually doing it now and it really teaches you to do a good job the first time round to save a lot of hassles in the future. And at least I can use all these tiles to replace the crappy ones we used from the ruin for the goat house. So at least we'll stop all these leaks. We also got guinea fowl and there was a lot of learning here because guinea fowl are very very stupid animals. <laughs> Although we've had like 12 I think in the last couple of years, the only one you need to know is Larry because he will be the only survivor in the next couple of years. Yes Larry go! Oh my goodness go guys! Go you gotta love it out there! Go Larry go! Because our channel was growing, we were meeting a lot of lovely people and getting a lot of helpful advice. And one day, this lovely guy called Ash contacted us and he said, your digger is there doing nothing. Let's try and sort it out. Hello. Hi, how it's are you? strange. I know your face from somewhere, but... <laughs> so nice to meet you. Yes, and you. Well, consider it. Shoot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right, bonnet coming off. I kind of left it. They took out the engine, which was already a hard job to do, but then there was an even harder job to do, to find the parts to rebuild the engine. And then our lovely neighbour gave us a lot more logs. What did I tell you about the abuse that the car would get from Luke? Well, it just got worse. I mean, how did he manage to fit these logs into the car in the first place? I'm seeing him get it out of the car and still can't believe it was once inside it. It's crazy. Alrighty. Last load. So with all this wood, Luke needed a better chainsaw because his little one just wouldn't do. Say hello. Oh. Oh. To sweet Caroline. Do, 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 do. Okay, that's enough. I'm going to just stay like this all day. Yeah. Luke was getting so good with his chainsaw and he took on quite a challenging project and wanted to make himself a fishing boat. And with one of the huge logs that our neighbour gave us, he started to make a dugout canoe. It took him quite a few tries to get it right, but the result was beautiful. One constant as usual is clearing land and we didn't stop doing that. I love clearing land and finding amazing things.
<laughs> if I had to pick a favorite year, it would be this one. Year four is a story about kindness, about meeting helpful people, because without them this year would not have been possible. Unselfish acts, learning so much through our animals, through heartache, but getting through it. We received new equipment that made our videos better. Oh man. This is going to make my life so much easier. And this channel also allowed us to help others even when we couldn't afford to. Life on this farm is pretty awesome and all the animals running around free, where possible, is such a nice sight. But there was one thing we really wanted to change. We wanted our chickens out of our garden. We still wanted them free range. We love watching them running around the land, going wherever they want. It's also a little bit of a game looking for their eggs every so often because they all decide to lay them in different places. But what we didn't like was them destroying our lovely garden. So Luke said, let's make a fence around the garden and our gypsy caravan. And let us try and get some help. And it didn't take us long to find some lovely volunteers, Ollie and Diana, who were self-sufficient in their van. And I can't think of nicer people to have our first experience with. We worked well together, had a lovely time exchanging experiences and up went our fence. You better enjoy it, Chuckies. This is one of the last weeks you're going to be able to be here. While watching the goats jump up and down and play on a stump that they had in their enclosure, they got an idea. As a side project, they made the goats a seesaw. I honestly think the goats had a lot more fun playing on that fallen log and stump, but at least they had a choice when they were stuck in their enclosure, but their favorite thing to do was go out on walks and play on the boulders.
<laughs> oh my goodness, it was so nice to have a fence. And then Lou decided to get organized for recycling, for compost, for hay, because up till now everything was all over the place. So now we had storage for the hay and the straw, we didn't have to cover it every time it's going to rain with plastic. We had some huge material containers for bottles, for cans, for bark, for sawdust, three compost bins and also a bottle cleaning station right next to the big bottle bag. <laughs> I just broke. Uh, to be fair, First batch. Sometimes living this way can be a bit tricky when you're just a couple. Some work is really heavy and sometimes I can't do it with Luke. So he does sometimes need some muscle and luckily Ollie was here to help us. Yeah. Oh yeah! Now I go... Another day, another job, and Ollie here has started the, the trench so we can hook the caravan up with electricity now that he's sorted it out. So the last point we have on the spur is right there, which we put in a couple of years ago. This was really important because an architectural drafter named Dirk had contacted us and said that he would love to volunteer his expertise and his time for, in exchange for the off-grid experience, which was amazing to us. Just couldn't believe the generosity of this man. And we wanted him to have the best experience we could offer. What do we have growing in this plant pot? Let's see. We grow a little pussycat. <laughs> Are you a strawberry? 
then you shouldn't be in there. With summer frost approaching, we prepared our land to make it fire safe and we also prepared the land for Dirk to make it easier to survey. And while we were at it, there was something that Luke had been wanting to do since we first set eyes on our ruin. Guys, this is a construction zone and there's Come three on. goats and a dog in here. <laughs> Luke was expecting to find gold underneath this rubble, but there was none of that. But it was still really nice to see the concrete floors. For now, we can only dream about living here, but working here and having Dirk come to survey it is very exciting and makes us dream about what's to come. Our garden was growing quite nicely and the reason we wanted an especially fruitful garden this year was that we were getting our next farm animal. A couple of months before this, in year three, Luke went to a lovely lady, Cindy Vine. I'm straight on to the first thing on the list which is to help Cindy cut down a bunch of eucalyptus for her awesome idea of making like a cordwood uh, wall. And so please Luke is here. We've worked out a deal. I'm gonna do all that work. She's got some amazing kuni kuni pigs, which are from New Zealand. Oreo and cocoa pop. I'm gonna have your babies. Hey guys.
I've just finished up at Cindy's, so all done, and I've gained myself three piggies, two girls and a boy in the future. Bye piggies, I'll come for your firstborns. <laughs> When these lovely little piggies were born, of course we went to visit them, but we, as much as we wanted to get them home, we couldn't. We had to wait until they were weaned, which gave us a few weeks to prepare their enclosure. And lucky for us, our neighbour who had given us logs last year had more logs for us, a lot more. So it was perfect timing to build our pig enclosure. We were also getting these huge logs for the outdoor kitchen that Luke has been dying to build. While getting the logs, Luke did hurt his back and it made it even more challenging to build this pig enclosure. And unfortunately, Luke ignored his health and got on with jobs that needed to be done, which prolonged his recovery. The day came to collect the little piggies, and what a day it was. This was all new to us, so we're very lucky that we had the advice of Cindy, who has been taking care of pigs for a long time now. At Cindy's, we also met these two lovely people, Nick and Andrea, for the first time. It wasn't the first time we heard about them, because they do have a YouTube channel, but they became our friends from that day, and they also became very important to us and to the story. The two spotty ones. Yes, which one are you having? The blacker one, no? <laughs> yeah, I think we're, we're yes. having a we, we, uh, that sneak one attack. over there. That one over there. And the, and the two boys. You're going over those guys. They're bigger than this. They're the smaller ones. They're the it is really good we listened to Cindy when she said We're going to have to try and get the piglets into the house to be able mm -hmm. to catch them because otherwise you're going to be exhausted chasing piglets around. You have fun with your pigs? And you, enjoy. We just got back and they are obviously very, very hot. I'm and it out. was a bit stressful for them because they love their mummy, eh? Look how she drinks, like a weirdo, Molly. Look at her. <laughs> what are you drinking like that for? <laughs> Are those? What are those, Daisy? Hey! Oh my goodness! 
Hey, Peppa, Maggie. Look at that, Maggie. And you. <laughs> I have no treats this morning. No, and I don't have either. Peppa, Maggie. Look at Maggie. <laughs> He's so cute. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Oh my goodness, good. We started with the loving, cuddling and training sessions immediately. Run to carry. Sit. Sit. Good yes. girl, Hello, Maggie. Girl. Good Even in the girl. wild she sits. In the wild. <laughs> <laughs> and then a couple of days after we got them, Dirk arrived. It was so nice meeting Dirk for the first time. We didn't spend a crazy amount of time together. Everyone did their own thing, but then we would always meet up for dinner and talk about our day and share some delicious food. And during the really hot days, we had little meetups, sometimes joined by our lovely animal company. I didn't think we'd be walking out with them already, eh? it's crazy. Look at them all. Look at them how they're jumping in the... <laughs> Whoa! You're a good girl, Maggie. You're a good girl. I already mentioned this outdoor kitchen that Luke has been wanting to build. Well, Dirk was here and who better to ask questions and get advice from? So much so that he ended up planning this beautiful green roof outdoor kitchen for us, which has been a project we started straight away, but it's been ongoing for a while because of health problems and the heat. Maggie, up on Peppa. Up, there we go. <laughs> One day I went for a walk with Dirk and the goats and I realized that my buck problems were just starting. Meatball was a very good boy with me, but with other people, he was getting a little bit spicy. Oh, that meatball. And this was around the time that he got Daisy and Susie pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> no. oh. <laughs> meatball, put away your tongue. <laughs> and while planning the outdoor kitchen, well, Luke realised that he's going to have to get rid of the oven and the tando oven. But the pizza oven, now that we will keep for a while longer because we use it very, very often. Yes, that lovely tandoor oven will have to go for the second time because we've already broken it down once before. The month flew by so fast and it was time to say bye to Dirk, but not before he taught Luke how to bend rebar. <laughs> yeah, oh, kissing! <laughs> He taught Luke so much and it was so nice to have him here, but we will see him again next year. I love this. Our plans for our outdoor kitchen. I feel like a right pro. Thank you, Dirk. Our channel was doing really well at this time and we had just got some really important sponsors, one of them being Bluetti. I just want to add that Bluetti are not sponsoring this video, but they did change our lives, so I'd be crazy not to mention them. And they also changed the life of one of our neighbours, who lives an even simpler life than we do. She had no electricity and they gifted her a Bluetti. And she had electricity for the very first time. <laughs> Thank you so much! <laughs> never got that in my whole life. Believe it or not, Sabrina has never owned a phone. And now, thanks to Bluetti's power source, we were able to communicate with her for the first time by getting her a walkie-talkie. Hi Sabrina, this is Sarah. Over. And then I stop and then I take my finger off the button. Okay. And now you tell me something. So now, so now I can speak about that and you can hear me? Yes. Over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go home, leave this with Sabrina and yeah, we'll see if they work. So fingers crossed. Oh, oh this is such a hard bit. <laughs> Walkie-talkie. 
camera. <laughs> Hi, Sabri Dove, near the river. Oops, over. Hi, I didn't hear you. Over. <laughs> awesome, over. Let's phone Sabrina. Hi, Sabrina, can you hear me? Over. I can hear you. Where are you? Wow, I'm next to the oak tree. Just up the hill from our place. Oops. I'm next to the oak tree up the hill from our place. Over. That is very pretty amazing. <laughs> Over. Having electricity opened up so many doors for her. And one of our subscribers gifted her a water pump. Because until then she was using buckets to get water from the river, which is very, very hard to do. And with this electric pump, just like magic, we filled three huge barrels of water. One bucket full, one bucket full, and one bucket empty, one bucket empty. Okay, number three? Yep. Oh, a special moment. Ready, special moment. Wow, are you ready now? <laughs> ready. I am. And? Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Sabrina knew she had a well somewhere on the land, but like our piece of land, Hers was abandoned for many, many years and it was overgrown and full of bushes and brambles. We did go and look for her well, but our first attempt was in vain. So we went there a second time, but this time we did not go alone. We were joined by two lovely do-gooders. One, a friend who has land that always needs trimming and still decided to give up one of his days to look for a well of a woman that he had never even met. And another of our friends visiting from Malta, he didn't come for a very long holiday, but still gave up one of his days to go and clear land. This is Mark, <laughs> our friends from Malta, who's visiting. And some of you might know Yuan from Frankie Off Grid. And we're all here to help our neighbor. I love this community. So off we went with three streamers, a couple of secateurs and a hand-drawn map in search for the well yet again. Can we conclude that we found the well? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, we found the well. I think we found it. <laughs> the mission was super hard and it took a long time and we almost did give up. It was a real good sign because it's the heat of summer, it hadn't rained a drop, it was extremely hot, everywhere else was bone dry and there was a puddle in the well. We were hoping we'd find the well, put the pump in and she'd have water right to her house. Things never work out as you planned anyway. The plan was to go back and empty it from the muck and watch it fill up. But that day is yet to come because of everyone's busy schedule. So we did leave on a happy high, but that did not last long. For our lovely little piglet Peppa caught a virus and was on the brink of death. This was such an experience for both me and Luke, and I had never willed someone to live so much in my life before. Come on, you can do it, Peppa. Maggie wants to play. You need a break? Wow! Oh my goodness, Peppa! This is the first time she's doing this. Oh my goodness, Papa. Giving you one of these, because you're really good. Stay here for mommy. Let's see. You want to try and eat something? You haven't eaten anything in ages. What's this, Papa? This is food. This is yummy, yummy food. One, two, up. Up. 
Look, it's open. You're not ready for food yet. You're more liquid. We needed to move Maggie into a separate enclosure in case what Peppa had was contagious. My goodness, you must be starving. You're gonna make it, you know. Take that vet. Huh? He doesn't know just how strong she is of a fighter. <laughs> this is ridiculous. So this morning you're already amazing, and now you got up to eat. Susie, Susie Star she wants to join with the group because she doesn't have a friend. Good morning, good morning, Papa. Good morning, Papa. Good morning, lovely little girl. Good morning, little girl. So, let's see what's going on here, Papa. Let's see what's going on. One, two, up. Up. Don't be lazy. Come on. You have to move your little legs, Papa. Peppa. Peppa, look what daddy has. <gasps> wow. Yum. You're my girl. Hey, wow. you're going to be okay. Hey, yeah. let's fill that tummy up. Not too much. And we did it. We did it. We did it, guys. Hey, And then the weather started cooling down and it was time to harvest our veggies and prepare our winter garden. And we were lucky enough to have volunteers at the time to help us do it. And while Emma and Alan were here, they worked very hard to help us clear land. And it was also the time of the year where we could have fires again. When you live like this, open to all the elements, you have to prepare for winter because the winters here are harsh and the frost can destroy a lot of things.
them playing like crazy, you see, right? Go on. Fun kids. While preparing for winter, something so sad happened, one of our chickens couldn't stand up, and it was getting worse and worse. Can you get up? When do you know when it's the right time to give up on, on your animal that's sick? I don't know. I don't have the heart to give up on her, but then I don't know if this is cruel because when I see her just sitting down doing nothing, if she's never going to get better, it's no life for a chicken. She needs to be with the others. But if she is going to get better, then why end it? This is my problem. I have no idea how she managed to get better so fast, but just every day was such a huge improvement. What's keeping you from keeping it up? When I was speaking to my mother, she told me, I don't really like chickens, but this Wobbles has been an inspiration. Oh, she's trying, eh? You're trying to move your leg. We almost gave up on you, eh, one day. I'm gonna cut it, okay? Let's see, Wobbles. Wow! Okay, well, she's trying to, she's like, I can scratch my head. You're trying to scratch your head. Did you see that? Wobbles, crawl before you can run, wobbly pie. See, walk, Wobbles. Wow. <laughs> wow, Wobbles, wow. Well done, Wobbles. Well done, Wobbles. Well done, Wobbles. She still has a long way to go. You know, she's still running a bit weird and it does twist. A lot of the time, one of her foot, one of her feet anyway. Oh, she's doing so well. Almost the end of the year and the digger was still in pieces. But the crankshaft and the block have been in Lisbon for the last few months really. And now they're fixed. And now we think we have everything we need to have a working digger. The hardest thing to find was this connecting rod. I found this from China second hand. So I think I found the last remaining Conrad in the world for my digger. So super, super lucky. All we needed was to find someone to rebuild our engine, but it's a lot trickier than that. We had very little funds too, but we really had to take this risk or lose all the money that we've already put into the digger. So Luke put a post on one of these Facebook groups and we really weren't that hopeful because even if someone said yes, how much are they gonna want and can we afford it? We get a reply almost immediately and we are over the moon. We know this man, we've seen him before. This man who's been spotted helping others around Castello Branco. When we went to collect the Kuni Kuni pigs, he was there. And the story gets even better. He has been kind enough to barter his expertise and time he's gonna work on this you with wait. me. You wait, Luke. Yeah, he's gonna put me to work. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to it. It's so nice to be able to barter. Helping Cindy clear her land and getting pigs instead. And this man was offering to rebuild our engine for barter. This was crazy. 
I will tell you a little story because in year one, year two and year three, I gave you a little bit of our past. And because we're talking about bartering, I would love to share an experience that we had when we went to Indonesia. Around 2005, I believe, Luke and I were still traveling and we were working in Australia, in Darwin, with a couple of friends in a tree nursery. And we decided that on our holiday, we would go to Indonesia. And when we got there and exchanged our money, it was the best feeling because when we changed our money from Australian dollars to whatever it was in Indonesia, I can't remember, we got millions back. For the first time in our life, we were millionaires. It didn't translate to much, but it was still pretty cool holding a million in your hands. And from there, while we were in a place called, I believe, Bukitinggi, we heard about this island, which was pretty close by, called Sibirut. And we heard about the tribes that live on Sibirut, the Mentawai people. And we really wanted to go there and meet them and just experience their way of life. Now, we couldn't go there alone. You needed a guide. And we found this lovely man called Molly and he took us there. Sibirut means muddy island and it was super muddy. It was really hard to get there. There were some places where I thought I can't even go because we're crossing on just a log over a really dangerous river, which is way, way down. It was a scary experience, but a brilliant one. The Mentawai tribe who we stayed with, they welcomed us with open arms. They were just such nice people. And their home was all open to nature. So there were chickens and ducks flying inside and there were cats and dogs everywhere. And there were pigs just outside. It was a really amazing experience. It's a beautiful way of life. I wouldn't feel comfortable just going around in a light cloth, but I just love how the people were with each other. Now the Mentawai tribe have a very interesting past. They are one of the oldest tribes in Indonesia too, and they are pretty famous for their tattoos. I believe that the Mentawai tattoos are one of the oldest in the world. They just looked so amazing on their bodies and we really wanted to get one. And the tattoos tell a story. The images all over their body represent an identity regarding the land of origin, social status and how great of a hunter the bearer of the tattoo is. So of course learning about this incredible story about the tattoos and what they mean to them and what they represent. We really wanted to get one just to remember the place. Luke and I got a tattoo from the medicine man and the medicine man was a very heavy smoker. And our guide told us if you take so many cigarettes, you can barter for the things that you want there. We were bartering for the food and for our tattoos. And our tattoos are made with soot from the pot that we were eating dinner from the day before. How interesting is that? Now, even though they live and they barter the old way, they're also moving along with the times. And you can see this on this man's hand where he's wearing a watch and he loved his watch that one of the foreigners who went to visit him gave him. But also the children used to walk to the village and go to school there. And one of the days we walked to the village and we spent some time with the children and it was such a nice day. Matthew and Luke started being silly and pretending they were ducks and the kids loved it. Anyway, I, I just wanted to share this with you because when I think of bartering and an old way of life and living simply, these are the people that come to mind. So anyway, back to the story and back to Nick and bartering with this lovely man. Nick, being a very busy man, couldn't promise when it would be ready, but he did say that whenever it rained, he would work on the digger. So there was a lot of rain dancing that month and lucky for us, it did rain quite a bit and Nick worked really fast on rebuilding the engine. Look, as you can probably hear, it's uh, pissing down outside. So uh, good news for you. I'm going to do have a good day on your engine today. Ashley and his heart of gold have once again come up to help us put the engine back in the digger and try and revive this useless huge ornament we have on our land. Alrighty, it's in the van, we're gonna head home. Thanks Nick so much, you are a legend. I hope it runs. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll call you a legend when it's running, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's as good, yeah. Right? Yep. Come on. Stop, stop. Oh. 
I don't like these sounds. No, no, no. Exhaust coming off again. <laughs> Taking it all apart again. <laughs> I have a tool I never knew existed. <laughs> I tell you, my apprenticeship is going, <laughs> going on leaps and bounds. And after a lot of work and a little bit of swearing and a lot of cups of tea, they did it! Do you think, guys, how cool does it look? Look, working, eh? <laughs> man, oh man, I can't believe we actually moved it. Now, I could use it like this, but once we're in it, we might as well fix the huge problem that we have with the hydraulics. So, the digger moves, but doesn't work like a dream. Wobbers' story has a little bit of a twist to the tale. And we also find out that we had more land than we thought we did. Dirk comes to survey more land and his plans look amazing. And we appear on Korean TV. So all that and much, much more to come in year five. But year five is still going on till December. So you will have to wait a little bit for that video. All these helpful, kind and generous people I have mentioned in our story who actually have YouTube channels, I have put a link in the description below to make it easy for you to find them and follow what they are up to on their homestead in Portugal. And if you enjoyed the story, consider subscribing so you can follow our journey. I just want to add that this was a really, really hard year to do because I'm going through a few struggles right now. So it was really hard to live these memories. We have so many people to thank for contributing to make this year so very special. And a special thank you to Dirk, Ashley, Nick, Cindy, and Max for supplying those hard to get parts for our digger all our patrons for the much appreciated support to all the volunteers and of course all of you now so much has happened i can't i tried to fit a lot in but obviously i left a lot of details and a lot of how we did things so if you're interested in checking out our whole process go ahead and watch some of our old videos i absolutely loved going down memory lane again i love these videos i am so happy we decided to start a channel one, we're still here, which is amazing, on our piece of land, which we love so much. And two, we're saving our memories because I already have a terrible one and I would like to remember them as I get older. I only wish I had started this before. I just want to give you guys some advice. Take more photos, take more videos. You will not regret it. The memories are great, but they will fade, unfortunately. You can't trust your head most of the time. But also, do not be afraid to follow your dreams. That's why you're having them. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you did. And we'll see you again in our next video.